Mid-size SUVs that seat seven, they seem to be the flavor of the season. Last year, we got the MG Hector Plus. Not too long ago, Tata launched the Safari that's based on the Harrier. Mahindra, they're working on the XUV700. But today, we need to talk about this, the Hyundai Alcazar, which is very apparently based on the Creta. In this video, we're going to be talking exteriors, interiors, comfort, features, ride quality, handling, engines, essentially everything you need to know about the Hyundai Alcazar. And we'll tell you how the Alcazar compares with the Safari. The Safari is our favorite in this segment, especially to drive around the country. But we will tell you if you should buy the Safari or you should buy the Alcazar and the reasons why you should buy either of them. But first, Adish will take you through the Alcazar. But before I do that, make sure you like this video, head to the comments, tell us which of these two SUVs you want in your garage and subscribe to the Evo India channel. Right, first impressions of the Alcazar from behind the wheel. If you've been in a Creta before, this space will be very familiar. But there is one key difference between the Creta and this, and that is the instrument cluster. On the Alcazar, you get an all-new digital cluster, which I think is very cool. You've got good graphics, very clear information. That's the most important thing. You've got a clear speedo, a clear taco, and a distinct MID in the middle. And some very cool graphics when you switch between the drive modes. Apart from this, the architecture is pretty much the same, but there are a fair few other differences which aren't so major. Firstly, the dual tone dash. Here you get a brown and black dual tone dash. It's Hyundai's attempt at making this a little more upmarket. I'm not a big fan of it, but again, it's an aesthetic choice and you may actually like the way this looks. Secondly, piano black finishes. There's a lavish amount of piano black finishes on the insides of the Alcazar. In fact, the whole center console is in piano black, right from the air convents all the way to the end of the cup holders over here. It's all piano black. Now, this piano black finish actually doesn't pick up too many fingerprints. I thought it would be notorious for doing that, but it does get a little dusty and you might want to keep a duster in the car just to wipe it clean once in a while. Something else that's new upfront is this new gear shift lever. I'm driving the petrol automatic and you get this very Audi inspired aircraft like gear selector. And I think it's very cool. It's a good place to rest your hand. Though you shouldn't rest your hand here. You should keep both hands on your wheel. And when you do keep both hands on the wheel, you will notice paddle shifters. Now these are plastic paddles. They're not metal, but they're very well finished. And they're a great addition to this cockpit. I mean, I've always missed paddles on these automatic cars. I don't think any other car in this segment actually gets paddles. So it's a great addition to the Alcazar. So you think of the Creta, you already think of a very well loaded car, but the Alcazar, it gets even more. Now the infotainment screen is the same as the Creta's. You get the same screen, Android Auto, CarPlay, all of that is standard. No problems there. You get automatic climate control, that's standard as well. Bose audio, ventilated seats, panoramic sunroof, all of that stuff is there in the Creta. So what does this get over the Creta? Well, one of the nicest features I found in the Alcazar is the blind spot monitor. So you tap the left indicator and the camera on the left wing mirror actually throws up a feed onto the instrument cluster. And you do the same on the right and the camera on the right hand side wing mirror does the same on the instrument cluster again. And that's a hugely useful feature. If you're out on the highway, it throws up your blind spot. It's just another thing that keeps you safe in the city. It makes sure when you're taking a right turn or a left turn, you don't have a cyclist or somebody who's not very visible otherwise in your blind spot. And it makes it so much more safer, your drive. Apart from that, the fact that it has those cameras along with cameras at the front and back means it has a 360 degree camera. And that again is usually useful. This is a long car. You're going to face difficulty while parking it in the city. And the 360 degree camera just makes it that much more simpler. Something else that you get that the Creta doesn't get are these drive and traction modes. This is actually very similar to what you get in the Seltos. But again, they're all based on the same car, so it makes sense that it would come here as well. What do these do? Well, for drive modes, you've got three modes. You've got Comfort, Eco and Sport. Eco is obviously your economy mode. Comfort mode is what your default mode is. And it means the drivetrain and steering is in its default setting. Sport mode uh, makes the drivetrain a little more punchy. It makes the gearbox hold its gears a little longer and it also weighs up the steering wheel. You've also got traction modes and 
traction modes are essentially well they control your traction control in esp and stuff like that now this is a front wheel drive car there is no all wheel drive so the traction modes have limited use i don't think you're going to be using them too much of the time anyway the alcazar is not a car that you really want to take off road but you do get traction modes three traction modes they are snow sand and mud now speaking of the engine the alcazar gets a 2 liter petrol and a 1.5 liter diesel i'm driving the 2 liter petrol today mated to the automatic transmission and i can tell you this it's a very easy engine to drive it's refined it's quiet at low revs and in the city it's super easy to drive effortless in fact creeping is easy the transmission shifts smoothly and it really feels like a refined driving experience now this engine is a naturally aspirated engine it's torquey at low revs it does have a good amount of shove 191 nm but when you pick up the pace it doesn't seem to have that same mid range or top end shove this isn't a very enthusiastic engine we've seen this engine before in the hyundai tuso and it makes a little more power here 157 bhp but it's not the sportiest engine in the world it doesn't enjoy being revved out too much when you step on it in sport mode it does move nicely but it doesn't move as much as you'd want it to and it you just get the sense that it's it enjoys being driven easily comfortably and in a relaxed manner it's not an engine that wants to be pushed too hard the diesel on the other hand i think will be a great choice for this car it's got more torque 250 nm and i think that's going to work really really well for the weight that the alcazar needs to lug around you need to remember that this car is 200 kg more than the creta it's also going to carry more people more luggage and therefore more weight and you need that torque in a car like this and i think the diesel should be able to give that to the alcazar now the ride and handling it's worth mentioning that the alcazar is 150 mm longer than the creta when it comes to its wheelbase we did also drive the diesel engine alcazar a few days later and it pretty much confirmed what i assumed when i first drove the petrol here's what i thought about it from behind the wheel a couple of days after we drove the petrol alcazar we managed to get our hands on this this is the diesel manual and i'll tell you this is the variant you want to have This diesel engine is identical to what you get in the Creta. So you have this 1.5 turbo diesel. It makes 113 bhp and 250 nm of torque, which is available very low down in the rev range. And that is what makes the difference to the Alcazar's performance. This engine doesn't rev too high. Like a typical diesel, I think the red line is four and a half thousand rpm, which is not too high. But you get a solid punch of torque and a flat torque curve, which is great for getting a move on quickly. So. Once you get past that initial lag at 1500 1800 rpm it pulls solidly cleanly and it doesn't sound like it's straining or struggling that naturally aspirated engine does get a little loud whereas this is a lot more quiet it's a diesel so it's got that gruffness to it but it's not loud it doesn't rev out and it doesn't feel strained when it's accelerating the alcazar diesel does come with an automatic but today we're driving the manual and it's a very easy transmission to drive so if you're worried about driving it in the city i can assure you that it's very easy to drive the clutch action is light you don't have to worry about a heavy clutch and be worried about your leg paining and all of that it's very light very easy to use and the gears themselves are very easy to slot in it's not like a suzuki gearbox which is like a a really smooth buttery gearbox this is slightly notchier but it finds its gears easily it slots in easily it doesn't have that rubbery effect and you're never unsure of whether you slotted it or not and it's it's a nice transmission six speed so on the highway you should be able to slot it into overdrive in six and get the efficiency that you want and in first second third you've got nice closely spaced ratios which allow you to accelerate quickly and get up to speed fast another benefit of the diesel is the fuel efficiency now this is definitely going to be more efficient than the petrol gearbox even if you look at the ARAI figures those aren't real world figures those are what the ARAI test cycle gives you real world would be much less than that we haven't driven this long enough to give you a proper tested fuel economy but once we do that we'll definitely let you know but you can be sure that the diesel will give you better efficiency So Hyundai hasn't done what Tata did with the Safari. They haven't just taken that platform and given it bigger overhangs to fit in more space. 
they've actually lengthened the wheelbase. They've put in work to get this up to the Alcazar spec. Along with that change, they've given it bigger 18-inch wheels. So the Creta gets 17s as standard as the biggest wheel size, whereas the Alcazar gets 18s. Now, what does all of that do to the driving experience? The ride quality is slightly firmer, very slightly. It's not a big difference, but just slightly firmer than the Cretas. I'm sure that's down to the bigger wheels, but I also have a feeling that Hyundai has made the Alcazar a little more stiff. See, this car is going to carry more weight. It's going to have to squat under that load a little more. And a stiffer suspension means it won't squat as much. I think that has intentionally been engineered into the Alcazar to deal with the sort of usage that it will likely be put through. That's not to say that the Alcazar is uncomfortable. It's very comfortable. Over bad roads, it remains composed. At high speeds, again, it remains very composed. A little more than the Creta, in fact. It doesn't have that same squidge in the suspension that the Creta does. And that works in its favor. It feels like a solid car to drive. And we've been talking so much about the differences with the Creta that I think it's worth mentioning what the exterior changes are. The grille is visibly different from what the Creta has. It's more blingy and got a lot more chrome on it. The headlamps, they've got a very similar signature, but they are slightly different from the Cretas. From the side, that's where the real differences are. You notice that longer wheelbase, you notice the longer doors. The rear doors are much longer than the Creta's rear doors. And that makes a huge difference to the stance. The big wheels, you've got disc brakes at the back, and the rear angle is where the real differences are from the Creta. You've got a whole different design language at the back. It's more conventional, more simple. The Creta's is very polarizing, but this looks much more palatable to a larger number of people. In fact, I prefer this rear styling of the Alcazar's rather than the Creta's tail lamps. Before we go further, I need to take you to the second row of seats because that is where the real differences between the Creta and the Alcazar lie. And that's where a lot of the Alcazar customers are going to be spending their time. The Alcazar gets those captain seats at the rear and the Alcazar is a car that will be bought by people who want to spend time in the rear. So let me head back to the second row of seats and show you what it's like over there. The second row of the Hyundai Alcazar is the place to be. You get an option of a six-seater and a seven-seater. This is the six-seater with the captain seats and these seats are quite nice. Now, in terms of comfort, you sink in nicely to them. You've got a good amount of support on the sides and you've got these lovely neck pillows. They're really the highlight of these captain seats. They're so comfortable and so nice to sink into. This is something Hyundai has picked up from the S-Class and the BMW 7 Series. They do this really well. And Hyundai has done it now with the Creta and now the Alcazar. And it's really comfortable. In terms of space, you don't have the same amount of outright space as something like a Safari. Knee room is a little compromised. A lot of that knee room is eaten into by these tray tables. So these take out about an inch and a half of your knee room. Not that it's a problem right now. I can move the seat forward and get a lot more space if there's nobody in the front passenger seat, but it is a little compromised. Under thigh support isn't too great. These seats, they sit really low down. You sink into them and that gives you a lot of headroom but you don't have enough under thigh support. This Safari, in contrast, you sit really high up and you've got a great amount of support under your thighs, though at the expense of knee room. My favorite bit about the Alcazar second row is this little console over here. It's such a small element, but it's such a huge difference to the backseat experience. Now, you've got storage in here, you've got a wireless phone charger, and you've got two cup holders. And the best part is you don't have to reach out to access any of it. It's all within the reach of both your arms. So whereas a lot of cars have cup holders down here or in the doors, nothing of the sort. They're all within reach. And it's extremely useful because on long drives or when you're commuting to work, you have things that you need at hand. Your phone can be charging right here. There's no need for cables at the back, although you do have a USB cable at the back, but it's so simple and well laid out. In terms of storage spaces, the Alcazar nails it. You've got this little pocket over here. It's not too big, but you can store little knickknacks in here. You've got another pocket down here, and you've got all of this storage space to utilize. So the Alcazar's rear seat is very well thought out, very nicely executed, and this floating center console over here really takes the cake for the second row. But we need to also head into the third row and talk about space over there. 
Getting into the third row of the Alcazar is very easy. You've got a really long door. So you've got a huge door aperture to use. And this mechanism is really simple. You just flick this down and the whole thing flips up, giving you a huge area to climb in. Now, climbing in. This seat isn't in its rearmost setting, but it's set up such that I have just about enough knee room in the second row. I can move this further forward, but that would come at the expense of second row knee room. I think kids will be comfortable here. It's good enough for kids. Nothing more than that, not adults. The Safari's rear seats do have a little more space, I think, but you do get separate AC controls, which is great. You've got USBs, cup holders. So this place is not entirely Spartan. You do get a fair amount of features in here to keep yourself comfortable in the back. How would I sum up the Alcazar's driving experience? Well, it's an extremely luxurious experience. It's extremely comfortable. There are a lot of changes to the interiors to make it half a segment above the Creta, I would say, in terms of equipment and luxury. And that works really well in its favor. It's also a very easy car to drive. The controls are light. The sight lines are good. It's not as big and as imposing as a Safari. And that makes it easier to drive in the city. It's lighter on its feet. It doesn't have that same robustness of an SUV that you would associate with something like the Safari, but it does feel solid. It does feel composed. And the incremental changes to the ride and handling do make a huge difference. I think the Alcazar has huge potential for the Indian market. It really takes the Creta's best-selling formula and works on it and makes it better. And the interiors, particularly the second row, are really nice. They've really intelligently designed the Alcazar second row and I think that's its biggest strength. So now let's bring the Safari into the picture which I think is the nicest seven-seater mid-size SUV right now. We'll start with the specs, especially the dimensions. Now the Alcazar has a longer wheelbase, longer not only from the Creta but also compared to the Safari. But the Safari is overall longer, it is overall wider and as you can clearly visually make out, it is also taller. It does make a difference to when you sit inside the Safari but what are the differences when you drive them? We'll start with that. I want to start with the way the Safari drives and we have a lot of experience, not of the Safari exactly, but of the Harrier and the Harrier basically is a slightly shorter Safari. The Harrier, we had it for over six months on our long-term test fleet and we drove it all over the country to the Chennai racetrack, up to the mountains, to Narkanda, to the BIC for a track day. We didn't drive the Harrier on the track day, but the Harrier took us to the track day all over the place we drove it and we enjoyed driving it. We have an option of a lot of other cars, but the reason why we chose the Harrier was because of its rugged ride and handling. It can take Indian roads really, really beautifully. This platform, the Land Rover Derived platform, it is tough and it can take a solid beating while keeping the driver happy and the occupants safe and comfortable. And the same holds true for the Safari. If you are going to be doing a lot of cross-country driving, I would definitely recommend the Safari because in India, the roads are always a lottery. And the Safari, it is great on smooth highways, very planted, very stable. You can really stretch the engine. And when the roads get bad, you don't have to slow down too much. You can just swallow it all in. Honestly, for long distance driving, the Safari is your pick. Stop watching the video now and go and book your Safari. The Safari also, it gives you this king of the world driving position. So you sit high up, you have great visibility. The steering wheel is really meaty, chunky to hold. Everything feels SUV-ish and this is SUV derived. The platform is an SUV platform. It is not a car platform that has been upgraded for a pseudo SUV. This feels like a proper SUV and it behaves like a proper SUV. Now that said, there is one downside to all this rugged, macho appeal of the Safari. And that is in the city, it can feel slightly cumbersome. Now, the wing mirrors have been reprofiled. The Harrier got those reprofiled wing mirrors when it got upgraded to 2020 BS6 norms. So the blind spots aren't enormous. But if you're going to be confined mainly to the city, I would pick the Alcazar because the Alcazar, it is just easier to drive less effort it takes out of you. It is less stressful. It also feels slightly more compact 
it is also a little bit more compact so it is easier to maneuver in city traffic conditions but the safari it is easier to bully people out of your way so both have their pros and cons but for the highway safari for the city alcazar let's talk out and out dynamics now the creta it handles very well in our opinion really well the alcazar it just builds on the strengths but it has been lengthened the wheelbase is longer it is a little heavier and that means it is not as sharp as the creta to drive not as involving there is a little bit more body roll if you want to drive a mid-size suv you would pick the turbo petrol creta as for the safari's dynamics now again this is based on the harrier it hasn't got a longer wheelbase but there is more sticking out at the back so more sheet metal sticking out at the tailgate end and it is heavier plus it has got a little softer suspension so it rides better than the harrier but it is not as engaging as a harrier so if you really are a driving enthusiast the choices should be between the Creta and the Harrier. But okay, we are talking about the balance of comfort as well as handling. Now, the Alcazar out and out handling its cause because it has slightly more cornering grip and slightly less body roll. The steering is also better on the Alcazar. Now, even though it doesn't have anything in the way of feel and feedback and all of that, but it's still better than the Safari. The Safari, it has been improved over the Harrier, but it still feels a little too light at highway speeds, a little too reactive also at highway speeds, and a little too heavy at city speeds. The Alcazar has a better blend. And of course, these seven-seaters are not really targeted at keen drivers. So for them, the Alcazar would be a little more suitable. Now, we must talk about equipment. In isolation, the Safari, it has everything that you would want. But when you compare it with the Alcazar, that's where you realize just how far ahead Hyundai has moved on in terms of offering equipment, loads of equipment to its customers. Now, both have this huge panoramic sunroof. So in that sense, it is sorted. The display on the Alcazar, it has got a full digital cockpit, which actually has been done really well. I'm not a fan of digital cockpits, but the Alcazar's cockpit has been done very well. This Safari cockpit also is nice. And I like the fact that it's got a proper analog speedometer. So I would give it the same, but most customers would score the Alcazar higher over the Safari on the cockpit. They would definitely, and even I would, score the Alcazar over the Safari on the infotainment. This infotainment, as it is, it is small. And then the CarPlay and Android Auto does not take the entire real estate. So if you want to you know, go to music or go to maps, you really have to focus on it because your finger will never touch that right icon at the right time. So in that sense, this infotainment, it really needs an upgrade. With the Alcazar, you get paddle shifters for the steering wheel. So again, another plus over there. You get an air purifier. So another plus over there. You get a really banging Bose system, which is better than the JBL on the Safari. So another plus over there. And then when you jump in at the back, that center console between the seats, that really does score. I will talk about the back seat later on and show you the space and the differences between the two. But let's come back to the Safari and the powertrains. With the Safari, you are not spoilt by options. You just have this one powertrain. It is a very good powertrain. It is a diesel, makes 170 bhp of power. You also have this sport mode. Sport drive mode activated. And you do get a good turn of speed when you put it down. It is a bit noisy, but it does move quickly. So on the highway, you are rarely asking for more in terms of power. The gearbox also, incidentally sourced from Hyundai, it's a six-speed automatic gearbox. It is well matched to the torque curves of the Safari. So you're never really struggling to find the right gear. The kickdowns are as quick as you would expect of a vehicle of this size and class. So diesel powertrain on the Safari, it's cause for me. But you do not get a petrol and that's where the Alcazar scores because you have the option of a petrol as well as the diesel. In terms of the diesel, the Alcazar has the same Creta engine that is 115 PS. So that isn't very quick and the Safari is got a faster, quicker, more responsive diesel engine. So on diesel front, you would pick the Safari. but. In terms of pure options, the Alcazar gives you more options. It gives you a petrol, it gives you a diesel. It has got automatics on both the petrol as well as the diesel. So 
in terms of the offerings itself hyundai definitely do give customers more and there you would score the alcazar slightly over the safari Tata Motors definitely need to get their petrol engine strategy sorted out. Today the price gap between petrol and diesel is what not even 10 bucks. So go ahead buy a petrol it's fine. It's not going to cost you more in the long term. Also a diesel engine is invariably a lakh and a half to like rupees more than a petrol. So you will recover that cost only if you do long and hard miles. If you're going to be driving it majorly in the city stick to a petrol honestly and a petrol is more refined more silent and more responsive than a diesel engine so the safari and tata motors in general need to get more petrol engines into the portfolio and that will increase demand for their cars but i do have to mention that for the general makeup of the safari the character of the safari the diesel engine is really well suited it suits the get up and go of this suv and this is a proper suv Did I mention that before? Well, I have to mention it again. It feels like a proper SUV, not a car. And the final thing that you want to know about the Safari is the back seat. So, let's pull over and let's jump into the back seat and experience what those captain seats are all about. If you ask me this is why you will buy a 7 seater for the captain seats in the middle row. So if you're going to be chauffeur driven the captain seats do make a lot of difference over a regular bench seat. We've seen that with the Innova Crysta and the same with all the 7 seaters. Obviously you get the space at the back. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now vis-a-vis the Alcazar. The Alcazar because it has a longer wheelbase, it has got longer rear doors and that's where ingress egress is easier on the Alcazar. In the Safari because this is a proper true blue SUV, you have to climb into the car. I really like the seating position in the back of the Safari. You sit higher, you get nice under thigh support, the seats feel comfortable and this theater seating that Tata Motors keeps talking about it actually does work because you get a great view of what is happening in front of you. You don't even have to take out the headrest, but if you take out the headrest, you get a view of everything. You get a straight view of the road ahead plus this panoramic sunroof. You get a nice view of the sky. you get this boss lever so you can slide the seat in front you can liberate even more space and you don't need any more space than this this is like business class seat kind of space so a lot of space you get an armrest also so that is comfortable but vis-a-vis the alcazar now the alcazar it has that center console and that makes so much more sense until we experienced that on the alcazar we didn't know that we would want a center console but now that we have we definitely want a center console because that has space for nick snacks that has space for a wireless car charger and because this armrest is here the seat feels kind of narrower but because the alcazar the armrest is in the middle you can stretch out so you do get a little more sense of space that's it the safari the seats are more comfortable so say you're going over these little bad patches of road the wings on the seat they hold you better and nicer so it is a little bit more supportive so overall this is really nice when you're being driven around for longer distances but like i said while i was driving also for everyday driving or everyday being driven around the alcazar does score slightly more than the safari the headroom also on the safari is not all that great it's like 2 3 inches whereas the alcazar has got so much more headroom and 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 i must point out that the safari is more usable as a 7 seater in the alcazar if you put 7 inside it is going to get really cramped whereas in the safari it is not that cramped of course going into the back seat i'm not even going to try and attempt it because it is not easy but the safari is more usable and one last thing i should point out this huge center tunnel that means that there is a possibility that four wheel drive can be engineered in so they haven't done a flat floor they have left the transmission tunnel so eventually when there is enough demand for it they can put a four wheel drive transmission fingers crossed and we always live on hope and fresh air so hopefully that will come one thing we haven't mentioned so far is the boot space 
with all three rows up, the Alcazar has a space advantage with a 130-litre boot compared to the 73-litre boot on the Safari. Flip the rows down though, and it seems to be more even. Hyundai hasn't declared storage with the third row folded, but the Safari gets 447 litres with that third row down. So what do I think of the Hyundai Alcazar? I think it takes the Creta's best-selling formula and makes it incrementally better. Much like the Safari took the Harrier's formula and made it incrementally better. The ride, it's a lot more composed. The comfort on the inside is much, much better. And the styling, look at it. It's a lot more conventional. And that's for you to decide whether you like it or not. As for Safari versus Alcazar, honest answer is that this caters to two completely different segments. So if you encounter a lot of bad roads on your journeys, if you do a lot of highway driving, the Safari, it actually will suit you much better. And if you enjoy driving, this will put a slightly wider smile on your face. The Alcazar, on the other hand, it caters to the majority of usage conditions. So you will be using your cars mainly in the city and the Alcazar is more comfortable and the equipment on the inside of it, my God, it is so loaded, so loaded, it's not even funny. And that's where we need to talk about prices. The Alcazar is priced really well. It's a case of Hyundai doing what it does best yet again. Compared to the Safari, it undercuts them. Looking at the top spec diesel automatic trims, the Alcazar actually undercuts the Safari and it also gets the option of a petrol. Hyundai is essentially giving its customers exactly what they want. And this car here has the potential to make the seven-seater mid-size SUV segment mainstream. Subscribe to the Evo India channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the thrill of driving.